Yo, what up, Space Fam? It's Gozen here from Anime. No, I'm just kidding. But my oh my, chapter 138 was an insane roller coaster of emotions. I know a lot of people didn't like this chapter, but in my opinion, it fucking slapped. It was one of the best chapters of AOT in the past couple of chapters. And also, I was wrong, uh, kinda. I made a theory video last month, and if you haven't watched that, don't worry about it. After this chapter, I pretty much flipped on my theory from what it was last chapter. That being said, I did say this. So potentially, Eren using the Warhammer Titan ability is actually chilling at the back of the Titan. I'm just saying that I could have been right about this, but anyways, after coming through a bunch of theories on Reddit and YouTube, I found this one from Reddit user u slash Raismia, and this shit is like a 10,000 IQ, and it's one of the main reasons I switched my theory on how I think the show will end. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining the self-reclaimed most probable ending theory for Attack on Titan. <laughs> Alright, so really quickly, I'm just gonna recap the events of chapter 138 so that we're all on the same page. So the chapter starts out, Yay, the rumbling is over, family reunion time, psych, Aaron's still alive, and everyone is a titan now. I don't care what anybody says, but I think that this 1v1 with Armin's colossal titan versus Aaron's was fucking sick. Then Mikasa forgets that she's having an insane hangover and starts fantasizing about Eren, and then she realizes that she's into necrophilia and you already know how it ends. Okay, now that we're all caught up, I want to go over some main plot points in the story that I feel like if they're not addressed, it would be pretty weird. So first off, I think that this whole Titan Parasite Hallucigenia thing needs to be explained more. I think that Ymir needs to be given a bit more explanation because she's just been kind of chilling in the background for a while. I think that we need at least some more Aaron POV to better understand his perspective, and I think that we need more explanation on Historia's baby and along with that the final panel which Isayama leaked. So to solve our first plot point, I think this chapter will largely be an Aaron POV. The reason being is that the last two chapters have been focused on each of the characters with 137 being Armin's farewell to Eren, 138 being Mikasa's farewell to Eren, and now it's finally Eren's turn. And now this leads into the main crux of the argument for this theory which is that Eren planned his death in chapter 138. Why did he do this? Well it's because Eren knew that Ymir would be reincarnated as his child. Now I know this sounds absolutely crazy but hear me out. Throughout history the founding titan has been passed down through consumption. The original king for ordered his children to eat Ymir's body and their kids ate their bodies and so on for 2000 years, the founding titan has been passed down through generations. After Eren's death, the founding titan will be passed on to Historia's baby, marking the first time that the founding titan has been passed on through a random newborn child. So it makes sense for something completely unprecedented like this to happen. Also, I think that Zeke's death was largely placed to kind of throw us off to think that it was going to be used to resume the rumbling by the child inheriting the Beast Titan, but in reality what was important was the Founding Titan. Also Historia is royal blood and looks a lot like Ymir, and this would also explain why Ymir is smiling in the background here because she knows that she's about to get revived. Okay, but we still haven't answered the question of how Eren knew that Ymir would be reincarnated as Historia's child, and I think that this goes back to our conversation with Eren and Historia back in chapter 130. I think that because Eren has the ability to see future memories with the Attack Titan, he was able to see that Ymir would be reincarnated, so Eren tells Historia that he has to find which child will inherit the founding. That's when Historia asks this to make Eren's job easier. This would allow Eren to perfectly organize everything so that his death occurs right before the birth of Historia's child. And so this is how I think the chapter will play out. Ymir will disappear from inside Eren's titan's mouth, and Historia's baby is born back on Paradise Island. All the Eldians will be summoned into the paths with Eren and Ymir waiting for them. This is when Eren will announce that the age of the titans is over, and we'll also get our explanation from Eren on why he went through with everything and what his true motives have been. Also, we might see John, Connie, and Gabi along with the rest of the Wall Titans revert back into humans. And I think that through the paths we'll have the final panel take place with Eren and Ymir. I think this is also what Eren shows Grisha to convince him to go through with his plan, because as I mentioned before, it's really weird how Grisha went from begging Zeke to stop Eren to giving him the Founding Titan and Attack Titan powers. And this would also explain why Grisha and Kurir would be helping the Alliance to fight Eren, because they know that his true goal is to pass on the Founding Titan power. 
Also, there's a whole thing with Mikasa's headaches and hallucinations. So I think that this pretty much ended the time loop theory because this can't be an alternate universe because he would need Zeke to influence Krisha and if he didn't go through with the rumbling then he would have never had that opportunity. So I think that the headaches are actually Eren trying to communicate with Mikasa through her dream to tell her to kill him for his plan. And also that's how she knew that Eren was in the Founding Titan's mouth. I don't think that Eren's plan is supposed to make him into a good guy or anything like that. I think that Eren truly believed in the rumbling and that it would end the cycle of hatred. This is why I feel like it would be kind of similar to Death Note, where Light wasn't inherently evil but his plan also pretty much involved genocide. All of this just gives us a reason for why Eren went through with the rumbling. Also, I don't think that Eren is really using Ymir as a tool like his parents did to Zeke because I think that he's really giving Ymir what she wants, which is being freed from the past and being a slave to the royal family. The only problem in this series is that we don't really have an explanation for the hallucigenia. I'm assuming that the hallucigenia would just die or go back to the tree or something, but I think in the next chapter we'll get some more explanation on what the hallucigenia is and how it works. I think that this might also give us some more explanation on why Mikasa has been having headaches throughout the series, and it also might explain why the hallucigenia keeps trying to reconnect to Eren and why it let out the gas to turn everyone into titans. I'm assuming that the hallucigenia was acting independently of Eren during this time, but I'm not too sure. Anyways, I've seen a bunch of theories now and a lot of them are really good, so I think it's just up to Isayama now to sew all of these loose ends that he has into an ending and I think it will be beautiful. Also, I'm hoping that we get like a super long last chapter. I think if we're pessimistic, the chapter will be around 60 pages, and if we take a more optimistic look, I'm assuming that the chapter will be 100 plus pages. Keep in mind, an average chapter in the past has been around 45 pages. Also, it's not completely unusual for the last chapter to be extra long. Full Metal Alchemist's last chapter was like 115 pages, and considering that Isayama has been planning this ending for about a decade now, I think that there's a decent chance that he goes all out with this chapter. The last thing I want to say is that I think it's best that you go into the chapter without any expectations for an ending. It's fun to speculate and come up with theories, but honestly I'll be happy with whatever Isayama puts out next month. Also, I recently made a Discord, and if you join in the first two weeks after I post this video, you'll get an OG rank on the server. Alright, see you later.